them come. This is their fate. It's addiction slash childish. Because even if you play for two seconds, you still childish for playing that game. But I mean, we obviously know what vices women got. I mean, they love they they love their real house. They they love their real life drama or they scripted real life drama. Uh, they um housewives and all that stuff of Atlanta, P Potomac. I, the reason why I know all of these because my wife. But um, yeah, it's a very. I, it's, I, I wanted to talk about it because um, I guess I kind of want to understand or at least give some understanding behind it because I kind of have an answer of why people associate it with that type of gaming with addiction, but mostly why women associate gaming with addiction, being childish and not growing up. So yeah, uh, I will, I start because I'm, I brought it up, I suppose. Um, my take on it is very simple. Women associate being, associate gaming being childish because they associate gaming with the children. <laughs> it's very simple. Like, like they don't have a understand or a they don't have like a a thought process of that something can can evolve within gaming. There is like this this understanding that this is it's meant to entertain children. Like they 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 they, they don't understand the concept of how a movie that entertains children can cost can can be can also entertain grown adults. I guess they never watch, you know, Lion King, they never watch Minions, they never watch anything that had a cross generational, you know, ability to entertain more than one at one person or one type of group of people. Um I find it hilarious sometimes. I just find it that it's 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 like this this block in their minds. Um, and I think a lot of younger women are starting to perceive gaming as something different, but it's like those 40 to, to like 32. It, I wouldn't even say 40 to 32. It's like, like, like 28 and older. I don't know. That's been my understanding of it. It's kind of like 28 and older for me. From when I talk to people, it's kind of like they have this distinct understanding that gaming, if you're game too much, you're not putting in any time or any effort into something important, something that's, that's like, and I just perceive it as entertainment, but they perceive it as uh, you're a lack of an ability or a, or a even um, a, a, a waste of time. I can say that. I, I yeah a waste of time which I, I still don't get it because to be it to one be to be childish it it I, I, in order for something to in my opinion to be childish it's have to be a something that is it it has to only entertain that I forget what they call it when your when your brain doesn't it doesn't develop that first, that, that thing on the front of your head, <laughs> the thing they always point to the front of your head about. And they say, you, your, your thing hasn't developed yet. So you, you can't really conceptualize certain things. So like, like <laughs> the other day, uh, take it away, Jalen. Well, no, Anatomy. No, I forget what it's called. Like frontal lobe. Yes. Yeah. I think it's the frontal lobe or whatever. Like when I told my, look, I told my nephew to go get some plates and bring them outside so we can finish up our s'mores and everything. He brought my physical, you know, my, my porcelain plates. And I, and we had a bunch of, you know, paper plates sitting there. And he said, well, you said plate. <laughs> and I said, bro, you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you, you know, think outside the box. So I was laughing at that. And I was thinking, well, yes, you're, you're a hundred percent right. I just said plates. I didn't say paper plates but i would think you outside with my porcelain dinner plate you would think maybe this isn't the right one you know what i'm saying and i he just i guess he just didn't you know understand it but it, it's not childish it's just more of like a lack of development but i think they consider gaming to be in that same realm of 
you just lack development and you, you kind of still want to do things you used to do as a kid. When in reality, some of the things that we do in these games are probably more difficult than the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis, like just, you know, scrolling your Instagram or, you know, reading a, a funny comment and just, you know, interacting with that as entertainment. Some of these things actually <laughs> require focus, learning, understanding, understanding all these different mechanics going on in the background. It takes a little bit more, but yet it's still considered childish. And they could never do it because they consider it childish. So I just be like, um, so yeah, I guess that's my understanding on why they call it childish they call it addiction because sometimes that the, the, the game of the concepts of gaming does take more time and it can be a it can't be it can be considered a waste of time by people so i mean that's all i, I mean that's how i want to start it but i want to kind of hear you guys' thoughts on i don't know the the associating that with addiction or being childish and, and how do you combat that? Because in my opinion, I combat it with the simple reality of it. That is just not. But sometimes it's like harder to explain than anything that when you when you don't really have a something to point at, that's not like it's like all oh, these intangibles that occur when you're gaming that you can't really say this, this, this and that is the reason why this is. Not something that's childish, but it's like the the thought that is childish is really what's hard to to break on a woman's mindset. It's just it's just the truth. Women are interesting. What y'all got? Oh, um, they around they women. No, I, I was gonna say that I don't think that it's. Of course, I don't think it's like uh, gaming is childish or anything like that. But I think that people who do have that perception, it tends to come from the place where it just hasn't been normal in their life for whatever reason. And that's for a lot of reasons. Like, uh, maybe it's, you know, your family wanting you or your siblings to do other things than be at home. They want you to go out and be involved in sports or you go do your homework or for other people, they want them to, uh, you know, so for example, my wife, she, um, her she didn't they didn't play games in her household just because that's not what they did and for her being a woman uh her family pushed her to do other things that were considered you know feminine or things like that so her hobbies tend to be like that but for some people like i have cousins and stuff who who are girls that grew up playing games because they didn't have that uh pushed on them like they got to go out and do cheerleading and stuff like that they just stay home play games so it really depends on like what your household is like and i think gaming unfortunately is also well one is expensive so if your family don't see the financial benefit of investing in it you know for like a blue wave player or stuff like that a lot of people aren't going to have like a game in their house mm -hmm. uh and then two it's it's still new uh like for us it'll be different like when we're grandparents we'll be able to like still talk to our grandchildren about games. But like for me and for us, like your grandparents or maybe even your parents didn't really play games that much. So it's, it's kind of a new thing in our life. So it's not seen as, as normal. Whereas like if I want to watch a movie with like my grandma or, or somebody like that, it's normal. Everybody can sit around a couch, watch a movie, no matter what age or background that you're from, it, it's, it's normal. Or watching TV shows all day. If you want to sit around and watch, you know, what people used to watch, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it's a timing thing. Like Golden Girls or something like that. You talk Yeah, about and Golden like Girls. It, it'd be on eight hours a day, and they'll, you'll watch that all day long. Like, yeah, you can say, like, watching TV all day is an addiction, um, the same way that people would claim it for video games. But it's also more normal because everybody is used to sitting around watching the TV all day. Whereas, like, if I'm the youngest in the family and I'm playing the game all day, suddenly it's weird that I'm playing the game all day, but y'all are sitting in the living room watching TV all day. There's no difference other than the perception of this is something different than what we're used to. No, that that, that makes a lot of sense. And... um 
it's a it's a it's another way to kind of understand especially when you said when you kind of bring it home for the um the actual how they raised and and the 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 biggest thing is availability like right now the availability of i had no i had no problem with um with my nephew just being in a room playing Fortnite. He's playing it for like quite a while while we were downstairs hanging out, playing other stuff. But we was also gaming. I made my like first time my mom was playing with a controller, playing freaking Monopoly on the Switch. Um, and I was like, listen, it's easier to play on here because we got the board game. And I was like, it's easier to play on here because we can save it. And if we quit, we ain't gotta keep we ain't gotta like hold on to everything and leave it in the spot. It get we get tired or whatever, we can play it the next day. And it worked. But we had to sit there and keep telling her, okay, this button here is what you do. You want to be it. You want to do this. So it was kind of like introducing my mom to gaming. And I never thought of it as in she just didn't grow up with it, nor did she interact with it in that way. So she considers it childish because only people that she did introduce was was her children. But. I'm not talking about that's the that's fine. And I'm not I, I, that's 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 the thing. Like when I talk about I'm talking about people in my age group uh, and that's where I kind of get this weird vibe that they just and I think you kind of did and you said it again. You was like, well, some people just couldn't afford to do it. And it's an expensive hobby. So they had to kind of really they had to choose and pick what they was going to put their mind or interest into. And it didn't, sometimes I didn't correlate with gaming. So entertainment wise, that's probably the most expensive entertainment you're going to find in the household at this point, because we want to see a movie, 15 bucks going to do this. It's, it's like, it's like a reasonable price, but you're talking about a console that's $500. Then you got to pay $60 per game. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that concept of, the price point is truly the benefit, the, the, the difference. We couldn't afford to buy games at our, and at our younger age, but we always go find some or find how to, you know, game or, you know, look for other gamers out there that kind of had other games. And we had swap trade and do all that, all that other stuff because they were, it still was an expensive hobby, but, um, we were kids and we did what kids do anyway. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that brings a point to it. I just still am confused on the whole addiction portion now, because I think childish, I can sum it up. People think it's childish simply because that's the only people that ever was risen. The only people that was raised on gaming was children. And they, now that they have these older generation of gamers, they consider you childish. But addiction, that's the interesting one. Um, what about you, Jalen? I guess any any thoughts on uh, either addiction or childishness? Because I think a lot of what Josh was saying rings true. So it might be the same, but you might have a different take. Yeah, I think for the most part, um, this is going to be similar to like what Josh said. Um, I resonated with a lot of the statements that he had made. Um, I think another thing is that like, um, granted, this like it's, it's kind of an age point, but like. You know, usually you hear people talk about games and stuff like that. They'd be like, you know, I grew up playing Atari, some, some, some. they older than us. But mm-hmm. at a certain point in time, they diverged away from the games. Yeah. And we got into the games where, like, gaming, it wasn't booming as as much as it was, uh, as much as it is now. But um, so you get a generation that played those games, and then they just got older, and they looked at it as, like, a kid thing. And then it don't help that when we got into the game and like the PlayStation one and stuff like that, the Dreamcast, we was kids playing it. But as the games, they started, I feel like they started growing at a faster rate. And uh, with that being said, we stayed attached to these games because of all the different innovations and being able to play online and using it as a, a mechanism to socialize with people. Um, that state, the, the game and it kind of started speeding up and it started staying with our age groups and things like that. And it started becoming more universal. So now you got the older generation that's tying it to, you know, like I did this when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. I grew out of it though. And then you have the generation that we are in. Um, I'm not breaking up the generation, like generation X and all that type of stuff, but just so lack of better words, we got the generation that's us, that's, you know, everybody put in their ear that game as a kid thing we've been doing as a kid and then you get older and then the habits 
don't really change. Like you still playing a game or whatever. So um, I feel like that part of it starts to look at like it's childish. And um, when, you know, uh, females say things about like games being childish or whatever, I feel like another aspect of it is that since they got older, and I don't just sound like females, some people, some you got males that say uh, gaming is childish and things like that. I have plenty of dudes say stuff like that, but um, it's like basically this whole idea of becoming an adult, like it's like change that's occurring and you start to do different things while you start going out to bars or going to more social events and, you know, road trips, all those sorts of things that makes you a quote unquote adult. Um, I feel like when you don't change from something, it starts to be looked at as childish. Like, um, and just taking it out of the context of games, I, it's other stuff that's been considered childish too. Like, you know, people say like watching anime is childish or um, it could be something my mom told me the other day, like buying sneakers and stuff like that, still wearing sneakers is not, you know I'm saying? You get older, that's, she ain't say it's specifically childish, but that was the implication. Um, so I think it's just the idea of transition needs to be present with your age group, with your age. And if that doesn't change, then it could be looked at as certain things are childish if you're still doing it as a kid versus doing it now. So hmm. when you said That's that, gonna, I was thinking older like, people don't like to have fun. Uh, no, it's not. And I was thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking basically, like, is it harder? <laughs> um, is it harder to be broke in a gamer, and not from a sense of you can't afford the games, but to like the perception of who you are as a person, like? You could be broke and go to the movies and watch movies, but you, can you be broke and be gamer? <laughs> like, I think there is like this a distinct difference, and um, that might be leads into the perception of childish and uh, for for one being childish, but also you know having like issues with people um, considering like an addiction because if you broke, you can't afford to be gaming. Is that kind of like? It, well, I guess what's your thoughts on being broke in a gamer? I mean, with Game well, Pass and all the other type of stuff, no, I think it's definitely possible. Like, games, you can get them relatively cheap, cheap, and um, it's not like we have a lot of resources to get these games and a lot of different methods to obtain these games versus back then. You need to have GameStop store credit, or you need to have some money in your pocket to go get you a game. I mean, it, it wasn't a way yeah. to skin it. wasn't another way to skin a cat for a way. You know, growing up as a kid, we ain't no ways to get a game. We just had to get our birthday money or something to go cop a game. Like, yeah. So yeah, it's. It, I, I guess you answered that. I don't think it's. I don't think it really matters if you're broke in a game. I think it matters about. Maybe more so, it's a more of a, a testament to what you do with your time, or, or not a testament, but like, um, a more of a calculation based off what you're doing with your time versus anything like. They okay. You're fine to go on a Saturday night and go watch a movie, but if you're if you're watching movies every day and you're not really going out there to make no money, then that's a problem. Just like if you're gaming every day and you don't really go out there to make no money, it's a problem. And my my understanding is that for not being childish is is taking care of your responsibilities. But I think, um, I think when you're Per- perception is, is skewing that to the point where even if you have money and you play games, you're still considered childish. And that's where I was, I was I'm trying to figure out, like, if I'm successful and I just tend to want to play games with my own time, is that truly considered childish or am I just now enjoying my own hobbies? Like, where is that breaking point? So, where does it meet to kind of turn that into a different thing? <clears throat> I guess I would equate it to it's like a lot of people have the perception that people who don't have responsibilities or who are not taking care of their responsibilities, this is what they do. Like, uh, for example, they'll go around the house and play video games all the time. I'm sure we probably all know somebody in our family who like, oh, you like, you know, 20 something. You ain't got a job. You don't do nothing. But all you do is play Warzone. <laughs> like that is a stereotype that people have for some uh people because that is true in some sense but also like you said if you are actually you got a job you are taking care of your business and stuff like that it shouldn't really be thought of it's like you wasting your time if you want to play 
a video game after work, or even if you want to spend your whole Saturday playing a video game because you earned it, like it's your time. Uh, but I still think that for some people, they just have automatically set up in their mind that playing games is a lazy negative thing a lazy person thing just like if you you know if somebody want to drink and smoke all day that's all they're gonna do you ain't did nothing all summer but get up and drink and smoke and that I, is yeah. the idea of a lazy person even though like i may not know it like if my cousin want to sit up and drink all day maybe he has a good job pays all his bills on time everything taken care of it's not really my business to like be like, why are you doing this? You know, unless it's actually detrimental for your health and blah, blah, blah. But video games is just like, you know, you, you are a responsible adult. You can play games as much as you want. <laughs> I just wonder where it, where it began to become something of that level. Like a gaming addict addict is, is just as bad as a, uh, uh someone that, um, smokes heavily or drinks heavily or, um, someone that it's, it's, I just wanted to know how that became like a negative, a slight, like, uh, adding, like, if you're a drinker, you're a drinker, right? Then then there's like the, there's like in moderation. I just want to know what caused the gaming, uh, I mean, it could be the people that was dying in internet cafes. They were just playing a game until they died. Um, and things like that, and it, and it, and the, and the things that that gamers or the gaming companies do to kind of keep you um, playing the game. Not, I wouldn't want to call it addictive, but to keep you playing, those are tactics that they use. So maybe I can see where it can become um, more a tagline with addiction. Um, but I think everything is in moderation. There's plenty of other games you can play. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do to Probably kind of 2K. minimize. Yeah, 2K is a very big gambling game, like a gambling addiction. Like you, those, it's like they they're starting to push this gaming up there with that, like all of that other stuff, and it's just kind of weird to me. But, um, but maybe I can see where they would get that concept from. But truly, when you're uh a, like an actual actual gamer i don't really think i don't think there's ever been a time in my life where gaming has caused a huge impact to occur in my life where it was like dang this is tragic or dang this is i can't believe i did this um well it's a coping mechanism um i ain't gonna hold you I'm yeah yeah, Skip it's class like, to play games, but yeah, it's also I think that too. I probably wouldn't have went to class anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's but I mean, what's a coping mechanism? Like, yeah. Well, let me ask you this: Are you putting a negative connotation on coping mechanism? Because, or yeah, are you putting a negative connotation on coping well, mechanism? I'm trying to figure out whether or not it can be used as a coping mechanism. I'm not saying that. A coping mechanism can't be all. All of them can't be bad. Like you can get a dog to be have a coping mechanism. Like those aren't all bad. I'm bad. I am. I am putting a bad connotation on what a coping mechanism is, but I'm saying it falls in line with something people do to escape reality, a real or their situation. So things that you do to escape your real situation can be addicting. But at the same time, there's plenty of things that you do to escape your reality. Like when you go sit in the seat and watch a movie, but they can consider you ad- addicted to TV. Um, you can be some, you can sit somewhere and drink uh, heavily or drink a certain amount in, um, in a day. That's considered a coping mechanism. You can smoke a lot. Yes. So a coping mechanism. There's, um, sex that can consider a coping mechanism like there's plenty of things you can do that is a coping mechanism but there's also things that's like very small that you can do the two but i think when you think of coping mechanism you don't think of like oh he got him a, a rescue dog and he's now coping with his reality of his life i don't think that's how it works i think they kind of it always skews negative to me so i am putting a, a negative connotation of coping mechanism 
I don't I have no, that seen makes sense. It. I was just yeah. wondering. Yeah. Uh, but you don't get addicted to anything though, so whether it's physiological or psychological, so um, I agreed. So I mean uh so this I mean this this conversation kind of came full circle. I don't think that it, you I don't think it's as p- impactful gaming is as impactful to a a developing mind as one may think. Um I think developing minds need stimulation and I think gaming is probably one of the most intense but also challenging things that one can do. Um when it comes to like entertainment, like there's no cha- there's no challenge about a movie. I mean, cause they're going to tell you the ending at the end of it, but you have to physically play this game and you have to be good at the game to get to set ending to unlock it and challenge yourself. Now there's obviously times where you can change it, just change the sliders and make it easy for yourself. But you, at the end of the day, it's an entertainment for you to get through, either, whether that's single player games, challenge, time trials, whatever the case may be. You have to think outside the box in order for you to get to the end goal. And that is a that is basically what they do in school. It's kind of like they try to teach you things about the world and reality and then they kind of make you use those things in a different way and challenge yourself. So I think in reality I think gaming could be mo- uh, the most, probably most beneficial for me to think creatively that I've like anything in a type of hobby or entertainment that I have ever engaged with to think creative, creatively. Um, so I wouldn't knock it, but at the same time, I can see where the association with addiction and childishness comes from. I wonder how long now it will take for this to kind of be flipped where um, people are actually using games to learn, to to really create, to build like obviously Minecraft, all these big things where you kind of look at it and you're like, this stuff took a mind of its own. And like people are really taking it and running with it, like dreams and forge mode and Halo, like stuff that you would never think is possible within the gaming world that people take the time to build and create. And, um, it shows how powerful these com- these things are. Um, so to, to see that flip is really going to be interesting. Um, but I don't think it's going to be the metaverse. <laughs> I think that's going to crash and burn. I ain't going to hold you. Uh, but there's going to be something out there that kind of makes it makes up for it. But yeah, that, I mean, that's all I had on it. I didn't really have much else. I think. Josh did the best job of explaining it, um, really. So I think um, we're we going we gonna to leave it at that. We all came up with that, right, Josh? Bam. Stamp that. Um, 